Hello everyone, so I'm feeling a little delirious and crazy. I've probably had not enough food and too much caffeine, so enjoy the little rant we've got here. Today, what I want to talk about is my favorite part of the glasses, the part that makes it all work. Frames are cool and fun and funky, and I enjoy that thoroughly, but the part that actually matters for most of the people out there, all the ones that need a prescription to be able to see, Sorry guys, there are people out there that don't. I'm one of them right here, this distance. Perfect, it's great, love it. Anyways, so the part that actually makes the glasses work, the lenses, the prescription, where it all happens, the voodoo that makes the magic come out, that takes the little light rays into the focused little beam on the back of the retina and makes it all nice and pretty and makes the world crisp and rainbows and teddy bears and lions and tigers and whatever else is out there. So, what I actually specifically want to talk about is the material these are made up out of. There are tons of different lens treatments, lens options, lens materials, but there's two kind of primary classes of lens materials. That's the glass materials and the plastic materials. Now, most of the lenses out there these days are going to fall into the plastics category. The reason for that is they're lightweight, they have a nice trade-off as far as weight and optics are concerned, for the most part. There's one little devil in there, and we'll get back to him later. He's everybody's favorite, but I'm going to save him for last. Sorry. So, in the plastics category, you've got your basic CR39. That's going to be the traditional lens to start with. Everything from there is considered upgrades, unless you're shopping online. In that case, most of the time, polycarbonate is going to be the starting point. There's a reason for that. I'll get back to it later. But, so, CR39. Optically, super crisp and clear. Not quite up to the levels of glass, but darn close. Weight-wise, it's about half the weight of glass. It's always trade-offs, right? So, then, from CR39, in refractive index, which is what makes the lenses more dense and thinner. As you step up in refractive index with plastic lenses, you go down in optical quality. One in particular jumps way down and then back up. That's the little devil. Anyways, so we start with plastic, we move to Trivex. Optically is still pretty darn good. Weight-wise, it is incredibly lightweight. The refractive index is a little bit higher than standard plastic, so Trivex is by nature the lightest weight lens you can get in most prescriptions and still have optical quality that's actually pretty good. Then there's polycarbonate, the most impact resistant. Right there with Trivex, both really good impact resistance. Trivex has the nature of being chemical resistant as well. Great for the mechanics out there. But polycarbonate, back to this little guy here. So this is the one that jumps way down in optical quality for the material. Opticians demonize it. It's the worst thing ever. It's our job. Sorry. It's just optically not clear. We don't like it. But it's the most impact resistant. It has a lot of uses. Motorcycle riders, shooters, anyone that's at risk of danger particularly the people with one eye they see clearly out of. We want you in polycarbonate because we want to protect the eye you can see well out of. That's not to say all the others aren't impact resistant. They are. They all have to pass the same standard in order to be put here, in the U.S. at least. Uh, safety regulations are great, aren't they, guys? But, so, anyways. Polycarbonate, good stuff. Lightweight. Optically, we hate it, but it's, as far as upgrades from regular plastic, is one of the least expensive, really high profit. Shh. I didn't tell you that. Then, after the polycarbonate, we go up to 160 index. Not significantly thinner than polycarbonate, optically far superior from polycarbonate. 160 has the added benefit of it inherently blocks more blue light than any other lens material that we have. You can add things to it to make it block even more blue light. So it is vastly superior when it comes to blocking 
these rays from this thing. Oh yeah, I have my mirrored lenses, this thing here, this computer screen, the cell phone, all these things that we use all day long that cause extra eye strain and fatigue. So, 160 is my favorite for that one singular reason alone. It is the best balance, in my opinion, of optics, weight, protections given, and it's more dimensionally stable than other lens options. What that means is that over time, it's just not going to shrink much. It's going to stay about the same size and shape, so it's just going to hold up and last better. Ultimately, you'll need a prescription change long before 160 ever fails or starts to show any signs of shrinkage or degradation or any of those dirty little things we hate in lenses. Next up from 160, we have 167. So they're a little bit thinner. Weight still about the same. Optically, we're back into the range of polycarbonate. So, meh. It's the meh material. But it's nice and thin, so it does have that advantage as you get into really high prescriptions. And that's kind of the nature of this game, is finding the trade-off that works the best for each individual person. There's so much to all this stuff. The key takeaway there, though, is just balancing the trade-offs for your lifestyle. What you want, what works the best for you. Some people care more about cosmetics than anything. Fine, put them in 174 all day long, even though it doesn't make that much of a difference until you get up to like a minus 8 or a plus 6 or other prescriptions in that category. So, yeah, really like a minus 11 before you even see any advantage from moving from 167 to 174. It's the way it works. And then you have glass. They're very heavy. They're optically superior to anything else. Standard crown glass, super scratch resistant, super crystal clear when it comes to optics. You can add an anti-reflective coating to make it even better. The anti-reflective coatings unfortunately don't last as long as glass, but I have a pair of glass lenses sitting on the shelf right here behind me, and they are, as best as I can tell, about 50 years old. Yeah. They still fit in the frame great. It still doesn't squeak. It's amazing. They're lined bifocals. It's fused in there. You can't feel the ledge. Glass is great for what it is. But that aside, you don't really need a lens to last that long. <laughs> it's, it's bad for all of us. Uh, anyways, your prescription will change long before glass or 160 or most of the other materials that ever start to show any signs of failure unless there's issues with the mounting to begin with. So, there's no wrong choice on that part of things. Incidentally, you will see polycarbonate as the most common used lens because of what I mentioned earlier. It is really lucrative. It doesn't cost that much more than regular plastic lenses. But it's a nice little upgrade because it's lighter weight and people like to pay for that. So, yeah, that's why you'll see that so often. And that's why all these online giants start with polycarbonate. It gives the impression of added value, even though it's really not. Take it for what it's worth. So as far as lens materials, you know, I could jump into each individual lens and talk all day about it, particularly 160 because it's my favorite. Heavy dance. I probably won't do that. Maybe I will one day if you guys really want to see the differences for each of the refractive index for plastic, all the different options for glass materials. By the way, there's different indexes of refraction for glass, different types of glass lenses. I won't get into that. It, it's, it's so uncommon anymore. I would love to talk about it because glass is great, but it's heavy and there's people don't like heavy or thick glasses. It's the way it is. But... That's what I've got for now. Leave your comments, any suggestions you have. Please leave me some feedback. I would love to hear what you guys think about this channel. If you like what I have to say, subscribe, hit the bell so you stay notified as I post. I try to do at least a couple videos a week. At the least, I'll get one a week. But make any suggestions, anything you want to hear about, let me know, and I will get that up as soon as I can. In the meantime, you guys take care.